What the f Okay, so here we are at the Copart Casualty Lot in Okeechobee, Florida. You can see just how busy it is. I've been in line here for probably a half hour with an appointment to pick up my vehicle. There's still quite a long line left to go. We're here to pick up my new to me 1992 Cadillac Elante. This will be the second Elante. We'll hopefully end up fixing from a flood. My 1990 was a flood car. I bought that back in 2017. Flushed all the water out of the engine and changed the spark plugs and it fired right up. And that car still runs and drives great today. And my 90 Elante was completely underwater, but that was a freshwater flood car. I don't know anything about this one. It was sight unseen. You can't preview vehicles at these crisis lots. It'll let you come check them out. You can only come here and pick them up. The pictures did not have a water line marked but you look at the car and it looks to be clean. But I got it cheap, 450 winning bid out the door, 728 total, 728 bucks total. So I can't lose if it ends up being shot, if the engine's locked up and it's way worse than I thought. Well, there's plenty of parts that I can use on my 90 and plenty of parts I can sell. Being a 92, for those of you who know about Elantes, it's a phase two car and it has the hard top. So the phase two hard tops are really rare on Elantes. The early Elantes, 87 to 90, those all came with hard tops, they're not that rare. A phase two Elante, 90 and a half to 92, hard to find, they were an option, not many people got them. I've seen them sell well over two grand, if you can even find one for sale. I couldn't find any for sale in the country right now. This was a no risk purchase for me, but obviously my objective is to get it running. I'll turn the camera around when I get the car. Okay. I don't know why this is like that. It's interesting that that's getting hung up there. This was a sight unseen purchase, as I said before. So it is repainted. I figured it had to be. It's not the best paint job I've ever seen. Not the worst either. Just a little bit of orange peel. Damaged. See, I don't want to mess with this door because I might not be able to get it to stay shut. But I do want to see if this thing was actually flooded or not. And what is this? Okay, it's just dirt. So overall, it doesn't look bad. First impressions, kind of decent enough repaint. It's got great tires. I mean, they're Milestar, at least on the rear, but they're, well, oh, never mind. Look at that, dry rotted. What's the date code on this thing? 14. That's great. How about the front? Yep, same situation. So, really hasn't been driven much. It's got brand new tread, but tires are almost 10 years old. Body looks pretty straight. These bumpers get damaged at all. I don't see any cracks. That's what you gotta look out for on these. Got some corrosion on the chrome here. So I don't know if the water came up that high or if it was, oh, no, we got a crack. So that bumper's worthless if I had to part this thing out. How about the rear bumper? These bumpers crack very easy, so they're expensive. You can't just go, you can't buy a, uh, a new third-party bumper. You can't buy one from GM, so they have a lot of value used. I mean, this one looks okay. The trim's kinda screwed up on it. Okay, let's do an odor check. Here we go. Well, there is some mold on that carpet. Wow, this thing is definitely way rougher than it looked in pictures. Look at the key even. That doesn't look too promising. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I mean, it looks like it saw water. It was still registered. I'm looking at the registration right now from Naples. Oh yeah. See how this is, I think this thing did see some pretty deep water. I mean, the ignition's like, 
stuck. Wow, man. Hard top looks pretty good, except the weather stripping. I think they did that when they taped this. Oh, look at the headlight lens even. Oh my God. I better just take that off. I mean, that can be uh, re-glued. See if this one's gonna fall out. Probably, yep. Well, the oil looks okay at least. I mean, that doesn't mean there's not water in it, but definitely better than seeing it totally milky. I'm gonna drain the oil on this thing and change it before I'd even attempt to start it. New alternator. It's got a replacement radiator. Of course, you gotta believe I'm curious to, oh my God. I don't think water got into at least that high, but this thing's been sitting for a long time, it looks like. Man, looks like a mouse or something was chewing at this air filter. So even if I do get this thing running, it's probably gonna run like crap if it's been sitting that long. These 4.5s, the injectors don't like sitting. Whoa. That's, it seems really overfilled, but super clean. I don't know why it says damaged on the window. I don't know if that means that the door is damaged or what. The Tarpon Club, Fiddler's Creek, 2003. There's some corrosion on things like the exhaust, but otherwise it looks pretty good. How about our brake lines and stuff? Yeah, they all look all right. So I already opened the center console and, uh-oh, it does have water in it. So I think the water in this car got over the center console. It had to have to be able to get into there. These window switches are expensive too, so I hope they work. Ugh. See how much water's in the trunk. Dare I even look. Oh, nice. Well, see, that's good. Not only do I have the hard top, which is very valuable, as I've been saying, but it also has the rack. This is what covers up the battery. I mean, this looks pretty good. Eh. Nope. Full of water. <laughs> All right, well, it is what it is. Now the important question is, can I get this door to shut? Oh God, that didn't sound good. Well, that's because this thing is stuck. I gotta figure out a way to get this to shut. Get this thing strapped down. Let's get on the road. The next day. All right, so it's the next day. So I noticed a few more things. Seat tracks are rusty. I just was about to change the battery before I changed the oil. I just wanna make sure this thing even has power. I went and just wiggled this negative. And you can see I've got power on the dash. This has got this crazy almost like a marine battery connection going on, just to be able to quickly disconnect the battery. They probably had a drain. Seems like the battery is good at least, which is always nice, because I'm tired of buying batteries. But I'm gonna see if I can get that ignition into the off position. And I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to stay giving power. First time in the cockpit here. Let's see what works. <laughs> no way. <laughs> And it's not even because of the flood, but these radios always burn out. But last night, I went through all the service records that were sitting on the seat. First of all, same owner since 2003, and they have money. I looked at the address on the registration. They actually own two oceanfront houses in Naples worth millions each. That's where this vehicle has been for the past almost 20 years, 19 years. They did some good service work to this. They've had it since they had 30,000 miles. Now it's got somewhere around 70,000, according to the Carfax. Last time it was serviced, a few years ago, and I don't think it's been driven much based on those dry rotted tires. Transmission was rebuilt weirdly around like 40,000 miles, which these transmissions are usually pretty robust, but uh, who knows, maybe it wasn't a transmission problem, it was misdiagnosed, but they spent $3,000 on a reman transmission. I've got the paperwork for it. They had this radio rebuilt at some point. Let's see if it works, if, they, if I get any reception. Uh, 
Hey, all right. It might need some work. The power antenna didn't come up either, so it's not gonna help me get any stations, but this other stuff doesn't wanna come on because this key is just, I cannot get it to, I, I'm afraid, I don't wanna turn it too far forward and end up cranking this thing over. Oh, wait a minute, we got more stuff going on now. Cool, all right, the digital dash appears to work. It's hard to see because I got it being hit by the sun right now, but 72,000 miles, cool. So low mileage. The fans are blowing, but this is uh, not lighting up. I think it's got something to do with the way the key is just stuck in this position though. I hear the horn barely working, it's kind of weird. That window works. That window works, cool. And the switches work, it's important. These are very expensive used. We got a lot of stuff working so far, happy to see that. And I've meant to check. This is, oh, hoo, hoo. definitely corroded and there's water. Okay, so I accidentally turned the key and it doesn't start. Everything's trying to work. And I just can't get that key out. I tried messing with the uh, angle of the steering wheel. It could be an ignition issue and that's why it won't start. Okay, I'm under the Elante. It's got a weird drain plug. I think someone must have stripped the original one out. It already looks like water to come out of the, uh, yeah, there's some water in there. That's crazy. I didn't think it got any water in it. I'm glad it didn't start earlier and I tried. Although the engine could be locked up. I don't think so though, it didn't seem like that. It just seemed like the uh, ignition wasn't working at all. Mostly oil. Obviously the transmission fluid's gonna probably have to be changed. I just need to see if this thing runs first. It's gonna take a while to drain out that tiny little drain plug. Okay, I got the oil filter out. Uh, there's definitely no water in that. I got all the spark plugs out, you can see, except for one, one that's cross-threaded over here. I don't want to get into that right now, especially because there's barely any room there to really work. So one plug is still in, but the rest of the plugs I got out. I'm going to go ahead right now and vacuum out the trunk. I know I showed it quickly yesterday, but you can see plenty of water. I gotta make sure this thing runs, the engine isn't locked up and all that. And if that's the case, then I'm just gonna pull all the carpet out of this thing, everything and clean it well. Hopefully just seems like the starter is not working. I'm gonna go ahead and get a pipe, bang on that starter, got nothing to lose. It probably needs to be replaced anyway. Like I said, it was in salt water. And uh, let's see if I can get this thing to run. All right, let's see. Weird how the uh, the bell randomly started working now. I'm gonna bang on it some more, and if I still get nowhere, I'm gonna try to jump the starter solenoid. I've got jack stands down here and two jacks. Okay, let's see if I can jump it. All right, so, so I just jumped the starter solenoid like 12 times and nothing happened whatsoever. I had plenty of sparks flying there. I was definitely jumping it and uh, nothing happened. One week later. I finally got around to ordering a new starter for it. I think you can see her right there. It's like 40 bucks on eBay. It's a used one. It looks to be in great shape and they bench tested it, guaranteed it. It's got a warranty. The reason that I have it like this is I wanted to see if this engine was locked up. And well, uh, I regret to inform you all, although it's certainly not the end of the world, but it is indeed locked up solid. I took the serpentine bell off because I figured, well, maybe it's an accessory that's locked up, that happens a lot. And sure enough, as seems to always be the case, the AC compressor is locked up and it's locked up really bad. This thing's locked up solid. This was flooded a lot deeper than I thought it was. Didn't have a water line marked on it when I bought it. Three weeks later. Okay, so it's been, 
I don't know, two, three weeks since I filled the cylinders up with ATF. And I've already given this a few goes here. It's not looking promising, but I said that with the, I don't know if this video is going to come out first. It probably will. I said that with a certain other flood car. And then when I was about to give up, I managed to break it free. And that engine runs to this day. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and give this another go. The reason I'm setting up the camera now is I want to see if there's any movement at all. I feel like this thing hasn't moved an inch. So if you couldn't tell by the sound effects, I was pushing pretty hard there. And that doesn't look like it moved at all. I almost feel like I was bending the breaker bar and not moving the crank pulley. One week later. All right, well, it's been another week. Last week, I tried yet again on this crank pulley. You know what, these cylinders are completely full of ATF. I even scored it in a bunch of um, EB Blaster into them as well just to kind of help that concoction been a week i just tried again i got my boy nick behind the camera and nick uh how did that look from now having someone else watching as i'm putting my whole body into trying to turn that crank what'd you see i saw disappointment al you saw actually disappointment. saw it was actually turning the bolt yep you tighter were tighter on you're... the crank that's so i'm definitely putting the right amount of force yeah you're putting as much force as you probably should before you literally either strip out the threads or you snap the bolt so i think it's safe to say at this point that this again i just want to get the video out in this car eventually you know it's you guys see it in the background of other videos everybody asks what's up with that black elante this is looking like it's an end up being a parts car while I could drop an engine in this, the day this entire chassis was underwater, salt water to like here, you never know if things are going to start rusting. That's a risk I take with all these flood cars that I buy, but you know, they're, they're rare cars or really clean cars. This car is not perfect. It's got paint work on it. The interior is kind of beat. I mean, just the fight I have to do to get the seats out of it to really get it clean like Randy had to with uh, his Renalante. It's a lot of work to put into a what's going to be a rebuilt title Elante that I now have to do a cradle drop on. So I think this car will probably just end up being parts. I don't have the time right now anyway to do anything with this car. I'm not going to send it to the junkyard. There's plenty of things I would want off of it and I don't have time to strip it. So I'll just keep sitting uh, with the ATF and the cylinders. I mean, you never know. Maybe in a couple of months, try again and finally it yeah. breaks them free but it's already been a couple months so i think it's unlikely for now anyway i wanted to close this video out i'm gonna put the wheel back on this thing park it out of the way and save it for a rainy day so uh thanks for watching on this elante series i'm sorry at the uh the ending's a bit disappointing on it but uh things don't always go your way in life and if you can't accept that you know you're not going to have an easy time. So, Nick, any uh, any outro uh, from you? Hey, man. No risk, no reward. At least you gave it a try. So. That's right. And, you know, I'm into this for part value anyway. Yeah. The top is worth 10 times what I paid for even after I broke the window by accident. <laughs> Different story. I don't feel like talking about. Uh, there's a scar on my hand to prove it. But um, <laughs> I still, still get plenty of value out of this car. The radio and all that works. And there's no delamination of the screens, the window switches. Those three things right there are about several times that i paid for the car so uh it's got a new alternator a bunch of new stuff can't get hurt on it but it is sad i did want to save this car who knows but for now um, i'm just calling it you know a total loss so thanks for watching guys and keep an eye out for the next one